Hello, this is Andrew Collinson, Research Director of Telco2 and SDL Partners. I'm here today to talk about cloud and the title of my talk is How Telcos Can Make ICT Cool. Now that may seem like a, a strange title and certainly one I never thought I'd be talking about, but the hypothesis of this is essentially that cloud is an industry that doesn't have a technology problem but has a marketing problem. It needs to make itself simpler for the customers who now need to buy it. So before we get into that, a little bit of background, some numbers about cloud. Cloud is valuable by anybody's measure. It's estimated to be worth 2% of the profit pool in 2013 by our friends at Bain, and also to be 18% of the growth in the profit pool. Now, the, the growth in the profit pool they're talking about here is $26 billion, so there's a lot of money uh, available in that space. Telcos have about 5% share of the global market uh, by our reckoning at the end of 2011. Um, cloud has two principal benefits for telcos. Internally, to save costs and increase agility. We're not really talking about that today, but there is a, a stat there that's worth bearing in mind, and that is that Cisco showed by adopting cloud technology internally that they save 30% of their costs, and indeed they say they save more than that. So uh, there seems to be a very good cost-benefit business case for cloud as an internal transformation tool, let alone the uh, flexibility and agility it can provide. What we're talking about more today, though, is the external benefits, the benefits of selling cloud services to other people. And telcos potentially have an absolutely central role here as communication services are integral to the cloud. You need to be able to communicate with the cloud to get a cloud service working. So telcos have got a brilliant opportunity to do something useful for customers with respect to cloud. Um, a word on numbers in cloud. Cloud has been the subject of much hype, many acronyms and many other industry vices. Um, it appears to be breaking through that cycle. Um, we can see on this chart uh, here some previous forecasts, some pre-2008 forecasts. And this isn't a criticism of the forecasters. We, we've all been there. But it shows that it has been the, uh, the subject of inflated expectations previously. But what I think we're seeing at the moment is it appears to be on the right kind of trajectory. And it is in the, the region of sort of $20, $25 billion at the end of uh, 2011. So very much on the kind of lower end of those, those blue spots you can see there. And what I'd like to talk about are some of the things we think it's necessary for it to continue on that trajectory, to take it upwards and take it into the uh, you know, $100, $100 billion region. Now, I'm not going to explain this chart in great detail because I've done a previous presentation on this, which you'll be able to find in the, in the library. Uh, this describes the different types of cloud services, enterprise cloud, virtual private cloud, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Um, I would like, though, just to point out the growth in it. You can see an overall growth rate of something like 25% compound annual growth rate year on year. Um, and you can see that some of the sections are growing more than others. And I'll come back to talk a bit more about platform as a service shortly. Before I do that, though, I want to talk about the top level picture for cloud. And at the event in EMEA in November 2011, we asked um, a, a group of industry experts, at what stage of market development did they think the cloud market was at? And they, the very clear answer for both enterprises and uh, small and medium businesses was it's at or approaching the chasm, the difference between the early adopters, the people who are experts in their own right and buy things early, and the mass market. And this is an absolutely key point, I think. And when we move on to look at um, the reasons that we believe that large enterprises and small and medium businesses uh, have barriers to cloud, and when I say we, this, this is the group of experts we were talking to, you can see a lot of similarity uh, with, with a nuanced difference. The similarity is uh, lack of knowledge, f a degree of fear, uncertainty, of doubt, but a, a very clear sense of lack of knowledge and, and wanting to know more about it, needing to know more. In large enterprises, there was a lot of talk, is about, talk about um, it's like trying to sell Christmas to turkeys. Um, because people fear in large enterprises that cloud is going to take their jobs away. Um, we think a more enlightened approach is needed, and I think part of the role that the telcos can do is actually help people understand that this may be a way of saving your job rather than losing your job in, in the current economic climate, to have something that's more cost-effective rather than less cost-effective. Interestingly, what a large body of opinion in, in, in the expert group was, 
it wasn't that it won't happen, it's a question of the speed it will happen. They see cloud as an inevitability, but there is some friction in the, in the path towards that inevitability. And really, my message is about removing that friction and making it as easy as possible for customers to take it up. The same is true for small and medium businesses. When you look at what they're saying, they're saying it's about the difficulty of buying it and the difficulty of understanding it. And I think the cloud industry is its own worst enemy in this case. I've just been through an absolute handful of, of mouthfuls of platform as a service, software as a service. To the customer, this does not matter. It's really about finding a way to do IT better, or ICT in this case, better for businesses and making it easier, making it cheaper. I use the word cool to try and get over my frustration at the language, at the fact you need a degree to understand, or you seem to need a degree in this stuff to understand it some of the time, and it's really not that complicated. When we looked at what telcos needed to do, it's absolutely the same message coming back. Bundle products and services, put it together, give me a solution. Leverage the network, make your network work for me, deliver the thing I want. Partner more, bring in the people we need, don't try and do everything yourself uh, where you don't need to. All of these things are very simple things. They're saying the same thing over and over again. They're saying, make it easy, make it simple for me to do. So, finishing for a moment on the, uh, the kind of slightly evangelical tone of my uh, talk today about trying to make it easy, make it simple, and we will be talking more about that in our research and looking about how to do that and good case studies for that. I would like to dive into one area, and the, and the area I want to talk about is platform as a service. Um, and the first chart here shows that the projections of the revenue for telecoms companies are pretty similar at the end of 2014 if you use the uh, market growth projections we've got from Bain and the market share projections we took from our, uh, from our delegates. So that would suggest that all of these things are fairly similar and fairly equal. To a degree, that's probably right, because telcos are already quite present in the virtual private cloud and infrastructure as a service segments, the red and the green on the chart, uh, already are not so prevalent um, in, in the other two. But what we see is very interesting, moving on to the, the bubble chart, is this uh, purple bubble of platform as a service. And just to explain the chart, the long ways axis is talking about the compound annual growth rate. So how fast the market is predicted to grow in the next three years. The vertical axis is talking about how much more share telcos could take in the market. So you can see there that platform as a service is expected or it's possible for telcos to take a lot more share in a, a market that's growing very quickly. And we think there's an additional reason to be interested in that from a telco two angle. So what I was talking about before was about making cloud more accessible as a service to customers, making it simpler, make it easier, make it cool. What I'm talking about here is the potential of platform as a service as an enabler for telco two type services as a means to make telco capabilities available to the enterprise community. And we're seeing a lot of interest in that. Um, and we're seeing some very interesting developments on that. Um, Vodafone were talking, for example, about how they could make location-based services available through their platforms, uh, which was very interesting. Just um, picking up that theme for a moment, um, one of the things I wanted to mention was that um, looking at case studies, We've seen very clear evidence in those two that making it simple, making it easy, making it customer orientated works. So, for example, we saw in Colt and in BT, the way they arrange themselves around their large customers and their large customer groupings is to remove the technology hurdles, make it straightforward to the customers. Obviously, they're creating quite bespoke solutions for large enterprises, but they're really trying to take the barriers out. Um, Vodafone and Telenor, who, who also spoke, were doing more SMB-focused work with unified communications, so working with partners like Microsoft to bring together unif unified communications and office suites to give office pro productivity stuff, and they appear to be having some very interesting success here, and we'll be writing more and reporting more about that in, in the coming months. So, to conclude, um, what we are going to do moving forward, we're going to be looking at more on telco strategies and case studies about how to make it successful, what are the keys to success, who's working on it, who's not. We believe there's a lot of benefit in telcos sharing with each other in cloud because you're competing with such a wide range of um, alternate, alternative companies and they're not all telcos, there's more benefit in sharing than there is to be gained in, in the competitive marketplace or the competitive in, uh, comparison if you like. 
Secondly, how should telcos overall position in the market? And clearly that's got a lot to do with the network, but we'll be looking more carefully at that. And finally, platform as a service. What is it? How does it work? How do you make best advantage of it? So that concludes my talk today. Uh, thank you very much. You can find more on all of these subjects on our research sites under the cloud category. Thank you.